give it honor to God who is our Father, uh, to Jesus Christ who is our Savior, and to the Holy Spirit who is our Comforter, our Teacher, and our Guide. Amen. And to all of the starlights, all of the saints of God, all of the people of God who have gathered on this beautiful day. Amen. Uh, this is a day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This morning, we'd like you to turn with us uh, to the book of Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. And we're going to read verses 1 and 3. Psalms 34. And verses 1 through 3. Psalm 34, and verses 1 through 3. And when you have it, let me hear you home. Amen, amen. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3. Read as follows. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us enjoy, exalt his name together. <coughs> amen, amen, amen. For our lesson today and our message today that the Lord has given us on this beautiful day, amen. The uh, subject for our text says this, a never too much praise mindset. A never too much praise mindset. And our children I know today, fifth Sunday, uh, today the Lord has decided to allow his raindrops to come down on this earth, amen? And we know that everything that the Lord does is well done. And in the midst of it, he gives us rain, he gives us sunshine. All are designed for us uh, to grow and for us to improve and for us to strengthen. And the sunshine rains give us strength. The rain washes the ground and cleanses the earth and it allows the seeds to germinate and grow and produce and be fruitful. And so right now we look at this day as Lord is allowing as his holy word goes forward, the seeds of his word, that they will be planted and that they will germinate in your hearts today and they will be fruitful in the service of the Lord. And so if we look at this psalm, this psalm is usually used as a call to worship. It extends an invitation to everyone present to participate in a profound and prolonged pronouncement regarding our eternal, everlasting, ever-powerful, and ever-precious God. And when it comes to this scripture, and we talk about this scripture, this never too much praise mindset is something that we found in King David. He penned this psalm, and he penned this psalm after he found himself being chased by Saul, and he found himself confronted with an enemy king. And the Bible says at this time when he had been running away from Saul, and he went into enemy territory, the Bible says David began to act as though he was not all in his mind. The Bible says he pretended as if he were crazy. The Bible said he started to write on walls. He started to allow saliva to come down his beard. He did all these things when the enemy king saw him. Uh, the people had been singing about how Saul had killed his thousand and David had killed his ten thousand. And the king saw David. And he said, is this the king that many have sang about? Is this the man that so many have talked about? And he said, you have brought this man into this territory. Why have you brought me a crazy man? And the Bible tells us that after David was allowed to be freed from this territory and get out of the hands of Saul and from the hands of the enemy king, the Bible says that David wrote this song. And so if we look at this song, 
is very special to us. And we have to recognize what it means to David and to us. So we look in our subject verse this morning, and we're talking about a never too much praise mindset. In this scripture, David projects his personal never too much mindset, and he prompts others to join him in having a never too much praise mindset. The scripture says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Now, children of God, when we delve into this praise proclamation by David, we discover three things about the never too much praise. First, we discover that it is an individual praise. Individual implies that the praise given is personal, particular, and one's own praise. We know this because David says in verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What was David expressing when he said these words? This is what David meant by this expression. He said the individual with a never too much praise mindset will say this, I will adore, I will congratulate, I will salute and thank the Jehovah, the one true and existing and supreme God. Now, when, after, and always. Hear what he's saying? I'm gonna praise him now, when, after, and always. He says his adoration, his thanksgiving, his song, his qualities, his deeds, his attributes, his renown, his fame, his glory shall be constantly, regularly, daily, always, evermore, and perpetually on thy lips, in my speech, in my talk, and in my tenor. The second thing we discover is that it is an internal praise. Internal points to a praise that is situated on the inside. We know this because in verse 2, David says this, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What did he mean by the words in the second verse? This is what he meant by these words. He was saying that my living being, that which breathes in me, the breathing substance in me, the inner being of me, will shine, make a show, celebrate, commend, read, and celebrate even more the Lord thy God. He said, the gentle, the lowly, and the meek will perceive by it, understand, obey, and will brighten up, be cheerful, and rejoice because they know who God is, why God is, where God is, because they know God sits on his throne. They know God is awesome. They know God is magnified. They know that God is all powerful. They know who God is. And because they know who God is, and when your soul knows who God is, it can't help but celebrate and tell the world who God is. Third, we discover that it is an integrating praise. Integrating means it combines the individual and eternal praises together so that they become one whole praise. It implies that the individual and the eternal praise is brought together in an equal participation of praise. We know this because verse 3 says these words, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. In other words, David is saying this, David is saying, oh, honor, honor, and lift up, promote the Lord with me, and let us bring up, hold up, raise up, set up his reputation, his fame, and his glory as a unit, united all at once and all together. You have to say this again. 
This is what David was saying. Honor, lift up, promote the Lord with me, and let us bring up, hold up, raise up, set up his reputation, his fame, and his glory as a unit, united, all at once, and all together. If you're all together in the praise of the Lord, if you're all together in giving God praise, let me hear your horns right now. The Bible provides us this. It provides some wonderful portraits of people motivated and stimulated into a never too much praise mode. In Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, we see Moses and the children of Israel in a never too much praise mode. When they say this, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Hannah was in a never too much praise mode when she prayed and said this, My heart exalts and triumphs in the Lord. My horn, my strength is lifted up in the Lord. My mouth is no longer silent, for it is open wide over my enemies, because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you, and there is no rock like our God. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 4 declares this, that in the day that the Lord had delivered David out of the hand of all of his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul, David was in a never too much praise mode. The Bible says, he said these words, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Finally, in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, the prophet found himself in a never too much praise mode when he said these words. If I say, I will not make mention of the law or speak any more in his name. In my mind and in my heart, it is as if there were a burning fire shut up in my bones and I'm weary of enduring and holding it in. I cannot contain it any longer. When the praise of God is inside you, when the praise of God moves you, you try to hold it in, you try not to say anything. But the old people put it like this. I said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't gonna let the world know that I understood and I knew a savior, but I had to run and tell somebody I know who God is. When God fills you, when God fuels you, when God powers you, you have to tell somebody. You have to let somebody know who God is, why God is, and you can't help but give God praise. So as we close today, let's strive to have a never too much praise mindset. Let us have the same mind like David. Let us have an individual, let us have an internal, let us have an integrating praise. When it comes to our kinship, our fellowship, our relationship, and our worship of our almighty, all awesome, and all amazing God. Let us go into a never too much praise mode, just like the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the church would always do. Whenever they were in a never too much praise mode, we would hear those old saints and those old deaconesses and those old deacons and those old ushers, those old choir members, those old preachers, those old members, the people in the audience, everybody would get together and you would hear somebody say this, praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noonday, praise him, praise him, praise him when the sun 
goes down. Love him. Love him. Love him in the morning. Love him in the noonday. Love him. Love him. Love him when the sun goes down. And when he got good to him, he said, serve him. Serve him. Serve him in the morning. Serve him in the noonday. Serve him. Serve him. Serve him when the sun goes down. And when they really got happy, this is what they would say. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus till the sun goes down. So we leave you this morning with this never too much praise doxology that's presented in Psalms 150. And it sounds like this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the heavens of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the tambourine. Praise him with single and group dance. Praise him with stringed instruments. Praise him with the flute. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, breath of life, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, every breath of life, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it ends like this. It says, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Always know this. Have a never too much praise mindset. When it's raining, praise it. When the sun is shining, praise it. When it's hot, praise it. When it's cold, praise it. In the winter, praise it. In the spring, praise it. In the summer, praise it. In the fall, praise it. In your house, praise it. At church, praise it. On the job, praise it. When you're walking, praise it. When you're running, praise it. When you're talking, praise it. When you're eating, praise it. Whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure you have a never too much praise mindset. A never too much praise mindset. Whether it's nighttime, whether it's daytime, whether it's in the storm, whether it's a hurricane, no matter what, no matter when, no matter where, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me hear the people who have a never too much praise mindset. Blow that horn this morning. Always have a never too much praise mindset. Because you know something? When you're down, praise will lift you up. When you're wondering, praise will take away the word. When you have doubt, praise removes all the doubt. And think about this here. This is what David did. David knew how to praise God. When the enemies were behind him, he praised him. When his children were acting foolish, he praised him. When the family was acting crazy, he praised him. When he wasn't feeling the best in health, he praised him. When he was down, he praised him. When he was hungry, he praised him. When he was smiling, he praised him. When he was going through the victory with his enemies in his battle, he praised him. Regardless of the situation, Always, always give God the praise. And if somebody tries to say, well, it don't take all that. You don't need to do all that. This what you tell us. No, it takes that and it takes more than that. Because God is worthy of all of our praise. And for everything that he does for us. For every breath that he gives us, every blessing that he gives us.
gives us, for the mercy that he shows, the grace that he gives. God is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your reign that you have sent down, Lord God. Shower down your blessings on us. Rain down on us, Lord. Let your rain send your praise in our hearts. Rain send your praise in our soul. Rain send your praise with all of our being. Fill us up. Wash us down. Cleanse us with all of your praise, my heavenly Father. And Lord, we thank you today for all that you do. Thank you for these who have gathered, Father, who have entered into your gates and into your courts to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. And Father, we know that all that you do is done well. All that you do fulfills your word. And Father, you promise you will give us a farmer and the latter rain. But in the rain that you send down, you are able, Father God, to cleanse us, to wash away our thirst, wash away our sins, wash away our troubles. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we ask that you would be with all, Father God, those who may be suffering from ailments, those who are suffering from sickness, those who are suffering from affliction. We ask that you would touch right now, that you would move right now. Father, we know that you're able. Wash them, Father. Cleanse them of their infirmity. Cleanse them of their cancer. Cleanse them of their sickness. Cleanse them, Father God, those who may be suffering from the virus, your children. Cleanse them right now, Father God. And Lord, we pray for those who love ones that pass on. We ask for heavenly Father that you would touch them, that you would hold them, that you would embrace them, that you would whisper in their ear, that you promise never to leave them alone. You promise that you will be their comfort in their soul, comfort in their misery, comfort in their grief. So Father, you said in your word, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You said in your word, you would exchange and take the grief and replace it with your grace. And you said you would take the morning with the you, Father God, and you would give them a new morning of joy and serenity. And Father, we just thank you. We praise you and we bless you. Right now in Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Huh? Huh? Go ahead. Come on now. Oh, never too much praise. Don't be able to ever be afraid. To give God praise, to give God honor, and to give God glory. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come at this hour. Thank you, Father God, for those who have presented their tithes, their gifts, their offerings. They have rendered it unto you, Father God. And we thank you for being cheerful givers. And we ask that you will continue to bless them, Father. And that these gifts, these tithes, these offerings will be used for your works, your will, and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen, amen. And so we thank God for everyone today. Amen. Thank God for blessing each and every one. And we know and hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we thank God for the gift of thanks that he gave. And I'd like to thank everyone, amen, for the gift that was rendered to my family. And we thank God for you. And we render the blessings of God upon you at all times. May God continue to lift you. May God continue to strengthen you. May God continue to bless you. And may the light of God always shine so that you can be the starlight 
that God created you to be. Amen. 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 And if we don't have anything else today, grab our benediction. Now may the grace of God, love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you all now and forevermore. Let all the saints of God give God some praise by hunking their home. Amen. 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 Stay safe. Be blessed. Amen.